Hello Grade 11s. Today in our lesson on energy and chemical change, we will learn how to draw energy diagrams for exothermic and endothermic reactions. So what do we know this far? We know that we have to add energy to break bonds. The products in this reaction are free atoms, but these free atoms are at a higher energy than the reactant molecule. This is called an endothermic reaction. The energy of the reactants is lower than the energy of the products. We also know that the change in the energy is known as the enthalpy change or heat of the reaction. Change in enthalpy can be calculated using the formula delta H equals the energy of the product minus the energy of the reactants. Since the energy of the products is higher than the energy of the reactants, the heat energy or enthalpy of an endothermic reaction is always greater than zero. That is, it's a positive value. To visualize an endothermic process, think of riding a bicycle up a hill. The cyclist has to put in a lot of work to reach the top. At the top, he has a lot of potential energy. In the same way, in an endothermic process, we put energy into the system, and the product then has a higher potential energy than at the start. These energies can be drawn on a graph to represent an endothermic reaction. The potential energy of the system is labeled on the y-axis of the graph, and the x-axis indicates the progress of the reaction or the reaction coordinate. We could use time or reaction pathway on the x-axis. All of them refer to what happens while the reaction takes place. We know that the reactants in the endothermic reaction were at a certain potential energy to begin with. Let's represent the energy of the reactants with a blue line. Energy is now added to the reactants and the potential energy increases. The product is now at a higher potential energy than the reactants since potential energy is stored within the atoms. We represent the products with a red line. To complete the diagram, we add the heat of reaction in. Since heat is absorbed, delta H is positive. Sometimes we draw these graphs with a curved bump like this, rather than a simple straight line from the energy of the reactants to the energy of the products. We will explain in the lesson on activation energy why the graph sometimes looks like this. We will now look at exothermic reactions. Energy is released when atoms come closer together to form a new molecule. The free atoms have a lot of potential energy that is released to the surroundings when the bond forms. The new product is now at a lower energy. And the energy of the products is smaller than the energy of the reactants. So for exothermic reactions, the heat of reaction, delta H, is less than zero. That is, it is negative. Do you still remember our guy on the bicycle? The last time we saw him, he was on the top of the hill. When he goes downhill, he does not have to do any work, since all the potential energy is released as he rolls down the hill. The energy of the reactants has a higher potential energy than the products, and energy is released to the surroundings. Therefore, delta H is negative. This is what the curved graph for an exothermic reaction looks like. The reactants are at a higher energy than the products, and delta H is negative. A cold pack is an example of an endothermic reaction when ammonium nitrate dissolves in water. In a hot pack, an exothermic reaction takes place when calcium chloride dissolves in water. Diyasha also looked at the energy diagrams of these two reactions. Before we look at what she found, let's first see what chemical changes took place. In the hot pack, calcium chloride dissociates in the water to form calcium-2 plus ions and two chloride ions. Energy is required to break the bond between the ions of the calcium chloride, but energy is released when these ions interact with the water molecules in the hydration action. More energy is released than absorbed, so the surroundings become hot and it is an exothermic reaction. With the cold pack, ammonium nitrate dissociates in water to form an ammonium ion and a nitrate ion. 
Less energy is released when the ions interact with the water molecules than the energy that is absorbed when the compound dissociates. The surroundings go cold. This is an endothermic reaction. Now that we know the chemical reactions that take place, let's join Diasha. Now scientists have measured the quantity of energy transferred to make and to break bonds between different kinds of atoms or molecules. It may help us to use some of these measured values instead of talking in general terms. Scientists tell us that it takes about 2,240 kilojoules of energy to break the ionic bonds holding calcium and chlorine in a given mass of the ionic salt. So the calcium ions and the chloride ions have about 2,240 kilojoules more energy than a calcium chloride lattice. But more energy, in fact, about 2,380 kilojoules, is transferred out of these ions when they form bonds with water molecules. So overall, more energy is transferred into the surroundings than is transferred into the reacting molecules. This 140 kilojoule increases the temperature of the solution. This next graph represents the energy changes when a certain mass of ammonium nitrate dissolves in water in an instant ice pack. Look at it carefully. Arrow 1 represents the energy transferred into the lattice of ammonium nitrate to break the bonds, forming separated ammonium and nitrate ions. This is an endothermic change. Bonds form when these ions become surrounded by a sheath of water molecules. Arrow 2 represents the energy in this exothermic process. But the important part about the dissolving of ammonium nitrate in water is that less energy is transferred out when new bonds form than is transferred in to break bonds. So at the end of the process, the products have higher energy than the reactants. Arrow 3 represents the difference in energy between the reactants and the products. The measured delta H value for this is about plus 27 kilojoules. Arrow 3 represents the quantity of energy that is taken out of the surroundings which become cooler as a result. So, ammonium nitrate is the perfect substance to use in an instant ice pack. Before I summarize all that we have discovered today, there's one last point that I want you to take note of. When John did the experiments, he used the same amounts of calcium chloride and ammonium nitrate in his solutions. But we just saw that when calcium chloride reacted with water, 140 kilojoules are transferred out of the reactants. And when ammonium nitrate reacted with the water, only 27 kilojoules was transferred into the reactants. So for equal amounts, dissolving calcium chloride is more exothermic than dissolving ammonium nitrate is endothermic. Now to summarize, both the changes we have observed form new substances, so the dissolving in water of calcium chloride and ammonium nitrate are both chemical changes. One of these chemical changes is exothermic, the other chemical change is endothermic. Thank you Diasha. You confirm the shape of the exothermic and endothermic graphs. Let's summarize. We have established so far that we have two types of reactions namely endothermic and exothermic. Copy the table and fill it in as we go through it. In an endothermic reaction, energy is absorbed from the surroundings, and in exothermic reactions, energy is released. The energy of the product is greater than the energy of the reactants for an endothermic reaction, and for an exothermic reaction, it is the other way around. The heat of the reaction, or enthalpy of an endothermic reaction, is positive, therefore greater than zero. And for an exothermic reaction, it is negative, therefore smaller than zero. On the diagrams, we indicate the energy of the reactants, the energy of the products, and the heat of the reaction. There is an exercise in the task video to identify if a reaction is exothermic or endothermic. See if you can do that now. Until next time, check out the other videos in this series or look at the Mindset website at www.mindset.co.za forward slash learn. Goodbye.